love you. And I'll be back. Oh, send me tips, please. I need some boots. It's cold in Chicago. We finally got the money. Babe, tell them about why, the, why what we were talking about with the snacks. From our production standpoint, yeah, we need the coffee. Exactly. It wasn't included on this particular stay. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. That has nothing to do with that. You should express gratitude. We just, just need snacks. scrap that one, then. We need snacks. Use Take two. I just woke up from a nap. Why are snacks so important? Um, well, coffee is important. No, snacks. Snacks. Right, and from a creative standpoint. No, uh, no, from a production is, standpoint. From a production standpoint, coffee is important and it wasn't included at this particular location, but we're grateful and are showing gratitude to the powers that be. Just send, send us some money for snacks, please. Please. So Eric gave me $200 for my birthday and someone came into my apartment and took a $100 bill out of my wallet. That's the second $100 bill to be stolen from me since I moved in 15 days ago. Or like two hours later, I get a message from Ed, Ed Palmer. And he goes, um, oh, uh, are you gonna pay me back the money you owe me for the Airbnb? And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like right now I'm being fucking abused, raped, like going through the most and that's you ask me but I didn't say that I was just like of course I am I have all these job you know all these applications out literally two hours after I say that they disconnect my phone and he's still paying so he's making me pay him for the phone line but suspended the service T-Mobile Ed what's going on here someone please answer me this is bullshit I know you guys know what it is. If anyone can help, I would be very grateful. It's absolutely embarrassing to have to ask. Uh, so embarrassing. Like, how do you own stuff and have no money? Okay, so just a recap of um, the day. I've gotten um, six donations. Three people sent $1 each and two people sent 25, 10, and one sent five. So, um, um, that's not enough and I need more money um, and I need money. Please help if you can send me anything. My cash app is hashtag, not hashtag, cash tag, the number one, Heather G, G E E. I'm going to put it um, here as well. So please, you guys, I really need help. Thank you so, so much. I need a phone line ASAP. Also, if anyone wants to give me a ride to Roselle, I need to go collect my check. <laughs> I miss my kids. The haters are back, you guys. The problem in my situation has nothing to do with information. I don't need class, I need cash, baby. Inbox is open, DM is open, let me know how you're doing, and thanks again, guys, I love you. Hi, you guys, I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for everyone who has sent even a dollar. I really appreciate it. Keep them coming. Your dollars mean the world to me. Um, so, obviously, we don't value money over any. Okay, to everyone who sent me money today, I just want you to know, thank you. You guys, thank you so much. You did it again. Um, due to the um, generosity of you guys, specifically, it was like all women. I think 10 women. So I put in a lot of really hard work. And if you'd like to donate, let me know. Anyways, my main um, issue is that I have my phone bill, my shoes, uh, the, the entire wardrobe is down to three pairs of or four pairs of leggings. Most of them have holes in them. And um, Easter is on Sunday. So I always do an Easter egg hunt for my children. If you've been following since the beginning, you know for a fact that this situation was not caused by me. So uh, I wouldn't be asking if it was. Um, if anyone would like to donate, please do so via Cash App or send me an e-gift card for Target. 
um, or Amazon. Thank you so much. And my, my um, Cash App account is posted right here. And on top of that, we have court tomorrow and no money for a bus pass. Um, and until then, if anyone wants to donate a lunch or a meal, please do so uh, with Cash App and thank you in advance. Um, I have to say thank you. We just got back and I checked my Cash App balance and you guys are so sweet. At least 10 or 20 of you have donated in amounts ranging from one to 40 bucks. And I have enough for a hotel room on Monday when it's supposed to be zero degrees outside. So I want to thank you guys and maybe even Tuesday. Posting content so that these fucking morons who I'm trying to communicate with can follow along because some of them have head trauma of their own. So here I am with my sign uh, on the corner of who the fuck knows where, Irving and Cumberland. I came out here to see my children and Xavier's like, well, why don't we ask some people for money? Every time I try, it makes me want to literally blow up human uh, the whole entire human species. And literally, no one cares at all. They don't give a fuck. They don't fucking care at all. Four fucking years separated from my kids and outside. Four years. And every fucking time I have to ask anyone for help. Because I'm hungry. Because I'm exhausted. Because whatever the case may be, I'm reminded why the human fucking race ain't shit. I met a man. A one-legged man. Hold on. He's about to walk by and you'll see. I met him here four years ago, okay? And when I met him, I was waiting on a pace bus and I was wearing dress shoes and dress outfit. I had no help, I had nowhere to go. I had just been thrown out by Dylan and the Chicago police. It's been four years and I just ran into this gentleman again, okay? He has no home and one leg. He's out here getting money and gives Xavier and I some of the money. If you've been helping, thank you. If you haven't been helping, please help. Somehow, please help. Because I'm always looking for sponsors. They donate gift cards. Anyone was wondering, not a single person sent us any money for snacks to this day. So we still have not received any money for snacks. I know that was probably troubling some of you. Just to update you, Xavier and I have not received any snack money yet. But keep sending him fucking money, Grims, and I'll just be here with nothing. Makes total sense. Xavier and I are in this fucking hellhole of a situation waiting for some sort of um, direction, assistance, restoration, restitution, you name it. I need to turn on my phone. Please send me $60. Uh, and I'm, I'm really curious as to how it's possible that one person has sent a dollar with a note that said, get a job, you fucking bitch. So sponsors, where are you guys? Anyone left? Anyone? Anyone? Anywhere? Anyone left? Um, uh, if the message resonates, it's for you. If you feel that little guilt in your chest, it's for you. Um, I would be grateful if you could replace my belongings uh, I worked really hard for everything that I have my entire life. I've worked really hard. Uh, so if you could replace my belongings that you've destroyed, stolen, uh, or looked the other way and allowed others to destroy or steal, that'd be fantastic. And we're into the several thousands of dollars range. The car alone was 10K.
and my kids all four need Easter baskets. I still hope that all of you die. I don't want you to die. I want no one to die. I just want resolution to this situation as per fucking usual. Please. Okay, so we would need like an ounce of weed though, realistically. All right, what I really want to do, yeah, is dip today, like, so bad. Like, half of me wants to keep laying here and do nothing, and the other half wants to drop off my novel at my dad's house, grab the tent and a sleeping bag each, and just take off for the Pacific Ocean. I love you. I love you. Thank you for doing my feet. Do you want to be on camera? Um, Easter's tomorrow, so I wanted to go get some eggs. I don't have um, a bunch of money right now in the budget for anything. Um, as you guys can tell, things are slowly moving forward. But I wanted to run and get like a million little eggs and fill them up with different candy and leave them in the yards of my kids. So we're doing that. It's the Saturday after Good Friday, the Saturday before Easter Sunday. This is my first Sunday in four years. Um, I mean, my fourth Sunday in a row that I haven't spent with my family. Again, understand the connection between Dylan's release and when I literally was like shunned outside, literally. Um, it's not my family, they have nothing to do with it. So please don't blame them. But um, yeah, what are some of your guys' Easter traditions? And have you been fucked with by COVID? Like, did they throw anything off for you or your family? Um, we're also stuffing these positive affirmations for kids into each egg. Um, I'm probably also gonna write out a couple short little jokes um, and other things like that to put into each egg with the candy. Um, and then the the candies that are too big to go in the eggs, I'm just going to sprinkle them around the yard. And then when they wake up in the morning, the Easter bunny will have already came and they can go gather the eggs from the yard. Finished putting all the eggs filled with positive affirmations and candies, and now we're going to drop them off. Then we're walking all the way back to drop them off to my youngest child. We have to do it late because the Easter bunny only comes after dark. Duh. What is going on, you guys? I'm gonna step into it. Okay, that's right. So, hi guys, how are you? We are live from the Franklin Park Memorial. Uh, the memorial for various branches of the United States government soldier services. I mean, what's it called, babe? Uh, veteran. Veteran, I mean, uh, various. Oh, uh, uh, veteran memorial. Veteran area. Thank you to all the veterans. Thank you, not just to the ones who are, uh, you know, on these boards here who have passed but also to the veterans who are alive um, and, and to anyone who's had any part in rising the collective. Thank you so much. Thank you. My name is Heather Gillespie, Heather Coco Senza, Coco Chanel YSL. How are you? What's going on guys? So I was just doing some squats here. Um, getting in a little workout. I came, as you guys know, <coughs> to bring the kids, um, ooh, to bring the kids. I feel like they're making me do Mortal Kombat moves. Um, to bring the kids a Easter eggs. Tomorrow is Easter. Today is Saturday. Yesterday was Good Friday. Do I have any Christians in the house? Raise your hand for God. Amen. Thank you, God. Let's actually have a prayer, shall we? Thank God. We just want to take a moment to thank you for everything, for life, for family, for friends, for you, for the whole entire just establishment. Also for improvement and for forward, upward improvements for all. Um, Xavier, do you want to say hi to the people? Yeah. Here's Xavier. Well, I got the penny board. Oh, we're live? Yes. 
I got the penny board. See if you got the penny board, whatever that means. Thank you so much. Show up tonight. It's not paper. And no, I'm not gonna show it to them. It's a surprise. Right, exactly. It's a surprise for my son. Thank you. And um, Easter's tomorrow, so I stuffed some eggs with some positive affirmations. You are amazing. You are handsome. You are intelligent. You are all types of stuff. I love you. I am so blessed to be your mom with candies inside of eggs because our budget has still not come through. Dun, dun, dun. No big deal. We are improvising and making the best of the situation. My children are children of tradition, and so my mother would go around with a bag of eggs or my father or both together. I don't know. I wasn't there. We were asleep. They would go around and put down plastic eggs as well as the hard boiled eggs that we just did. Whoa, that was so scary. I mean that we had just colored previously and we'd wake up in the morning and sneak down to the kitchen and to the living room and we would just get all the eggs. Um, you know, happy Easter. That's what we did. And then my grandma would cook delicious. I miss that. It's been four years since I've been home for a holiday. Um, like I said, I'm happy to be here, happy to be alive. We're dropping off eggs with candy to my babies. And uh, that's all that matters right now. Um, other than that, I just I have to creep around out here for a while because, well, for anyone who knows the Easter Bunny, which I myself know him very well, and the Easter Bunny doesn't drop off baskets or eggs at all, at all, unless the children are sleeping. So he has to come super duper late and drop them off. There has been such an overpouring of parents saying, oh my gosh, Easter Bunny, do you have a time block? We've got a lot going on here. What should we do? Blah, blah, blah. And the Easter Bunny is super duper stressed this year, you guys. He is so stressed. It's like he's trying to find all these babies and drop off their baskets. I'm trying to tell them about their Easter baskets. Just don't even worry about it. No, for a fact. Um... That's at some point the, the Easter Bunny is going to come by with, with eggs for you. So I'm just trying to help out and do my part for my kids to give the Easter Bunny more time to focus on the kids who, you know, don't have eggs on the way. And I hope that the rest of my parent friends in the audience are doing the same thing. Yeah, I'm on the blue line at 4.30 in the morning. P.S. I walked 16 hours today to bring my kids uh, Easter eggs and then was told by two CTA workers that I could not board the train unless I paid an obscene amount of money for a ticket to a machine that doesn't give change. This city is a rob is a robbery. Like you're robbing me. The the Ventra, you go there, you try to put cash in. There's a disclaimer that says this machine does not give change. You will be paying overpaying fifteen dollars per ticket. Like. You're gonna steal my last $15, bitch? What the fuck? We're still trying to get back to it. Fucking sick of this This is Chicago. This is every single train car. Every single train car. This is fucking disgusting.
There are shuttle buses at the cell that will make all stops to Fort Clark due to a medical emergency at Illinois Medical District. Train service has been interrupted between the cell and Pulaski. There are shuttle buses oh, at the cell that will make all stops going. Okay, so you understand how awful it is to be oppressed, right? Now let's talk about these people that you see, much like me, standing in spaces like this, who are literally being bullied and fucking abused by this piece of shit, city, town, whatever this system is. They have taken us for three hours on the train. I'm exhausted, bro, I'm fucking tired. I don't have time for this shit. You see people here argue, screaming, and everyone, oh, they're crazy, they're crazy. Who are they talking to? They're not talking to nobody. They've been fucking tormented for three, four fucking hours. So of course they're fucking losing their mind. I just walked 22 miles and, they, and paid for fucking fare to go to where I'm going. But yet we're just stranded right here waiting on a shuttle bus. Three fucking hours. I heard somewhere that when you sleep with the TV on or background noise, it's a trauma response. But I don't think it is because I've been doing that since I was a little girl. Unless I was already traumatized when I was a little girl. Um, also, Xavier and I have been doing like a Bible study. We, we started at the beginning of the Bible and... I'm reading like a half a page or a page every day. And so there are so many questions. He has like a little bit of a better understanding, but so many questions. Did you guys see that question about Abram and Sarai? They later changed him to Abraham and his wife to Sarah. And my lip is split open right down the middle. Every time I smile or make any expression, it starts bleeding again a little bit. And I have no idea how it even... I went to sleep one night and it was fine. And I woke up. And that's how it was. So yesterday I posted some breast milk bags on Amazon and they are kind of expensive. I found some cheaper ones at Target. So sponsors, thank you so much. Um, we're still here in this uh, beautiful space. We're very grateful. Um, and if you guys have been following along since my other personal blog, Xavier and I had a baby five, five weeks ago. I had a baby five weeks ago. Um, and Xavier is the father of that baby. If you don't know his role in my life, now you know. Um, and we are, I am the mother of three other children besides baby Weston, and that's Vivi, Lewis, and Alexis. Um, and we are getting placed in a family shelter as soon as uh, we complete everything that needs to be done in the process. Um, so stick along for the ride and thank you for being here. So since COVID, it's been incredibly difficult for me to find employment. Um, I've had several jobs that have just been not the right fit for me. Um, a bartending, LA Fitness Export. Um, and as I said, they've just not been, um, you know, the right fit for me. There's been some sort of reason why um, they could not turn into long-term opportunities and the reasons never match up. So rather than playing the game of trying to figure out, you know, who, what, why, when, and where, I just continue to post my resume knowing that the right opportunity will find me or I will find it. We will synchronize at some point. So I'm posting my resume again. Forgive me for still being in bed at 9 a.m. I'm still getting up three, sometimes four times um, after my initial time of going to sleep to pump um, and just, you know, getting you. 
Yeah, so I'm still trying to recover from the year that we were um, left outside in a tent to die, basically. I was pregnant that entire time. That we were, I was physically attacked at 14 weeks uh, pregnant. I had to literally curl my body in a ball over my uterus to protect my unborn child from being harmed. Um, a grown man was stomping on my head at 3.30 in the morning while I was asleep in a tent. Um, there was no provocation. There was no argument. I, it was a stranger. Um, and there were several other things. Um, I'm writing about all of the things I've experienced in my novel. Um, but none of these things are acceptable ways to treat, you know, a human being, even an animal, period. There is there is no more to say about it. So I'm still catching up on sleep besides the fact that I just gave birth. Um, and I, I was very active my entire pregnancy up till 28 weeks when I began having contractions. So my professional background is in healthcare. Um, I also started my own company, um, which is a production company. I work it alone. Um, I have never once hired another person um, to model or curate or direct. Xavier works with me. And I had a previous assistant who worked on a commission basis in 2017, 2018. Um, but if you hear of anyone writing for the show or for the production, um, it's not to do with me. My company is called GoPro Solo. Um, and the account here on Instagram is called a GoPro Solo Production. And that's where I create statement modeling uh, campaigns about different subjects that I think are worthwhile to discuss further. Um, and humane treatment uh, of each other, compassionate treatment of each other, um, and just different things to better describe the world that I think we all want to live in. Ooh. And here is my resume. So if you have any questions, please let me know. But I'm going to post my resume on the next post. Um, I have a tremendous reputation in the healthcare community. Uh, everyone I've ever worked with has been, you know, very happy with my work ethic. Um, and I picked up a lot of other skills. I have a lot of college, pardon me. I have a lot of college um, and I'm just exposing my evolution as a professional so that I can attract like-minded individuals who have common, um, you know, goals, common values, common ethics, and want to take their business um, or creative endeavor in the same direction of where I'm going. So here's my resume on the next post. So in addition to all of that that I've just posted about, I also have a ton of other experience with regards to parenting. I've been a parent for 17 years. Uh, 14 of those years, all three of my children lived with me as a single mother. Um, and I was effectively able to manage a career, earn income, be a good mother to three children, you know, buy groceries, clean our house. Um, and I'm coming from a place of complete poverty. So in addition to all of that that I've just posted about, I also have a ton of other experience with regards to parenting. I've been a parent for 17 years. Uh, 14 of those years, all three of my children lived with me as a single mother. Um, and I was effectively able to manage a career, earn income, be a good mother to three children, you know, buy groceries, clean our house. Um, and I'm coming from a place of complete poverty. So this is unique for a lot of people. Anyone with money can hire someone to juggle those, um, you know, things without having a, a good amount of money. Um, you have to be very creative. So I was able to do so um, in a very successful way that I'm very proud of. I have three beautiful children um, and I cannot wait to see, you know, what they have in store for life. Um, and what life has in store for them. Uh, the areas that I'm looking for employment in are definitely first and foremost, remote medical billing and coding, um, any sort of remote customer service. I wanna be home with my newborn baby. He's five weeks old only. Um, so I wanna be home with him and um, 
I have a 10 year old little girl, you know, I, I really don't know what the games are behind all of the uh, events that have gone on for the last four years since 2020. Um, but I do believe in God and I do believe that God is going to come through and, you know, shine light on the truth. Um, in the words of Kevin Gates, I am who I am and who I'm not, I'll never be. Regarding any of my belief systems, I like to put it out there, you know, and put it in my bio so that no one can attack me. There has been a lot of really nefarious crap going on in the world of social media influencers and um, celebrity, if you take it a step above that. Um, and it's really nefarious and nasty. And I'm really glad that you guys have stuck around to hear what I'm talking about and, and you know, to raise awareness for this. Um, but they basically find a way that you differ in opinion from someone else and make it their job to attack you over it. Um, and it can be an online attack. It can be an in-person attack. It can be a verbal attack. It can be a physical assault. Um, it is truly disgusting. And that's what encouraged me to build the What Is Your Impact campaign, which is a campaign that's built around compassion and integrity. So if we're asking um, about the basic functions of life, of political life, of daily life, and of morals, values, and ethics, I think of sexuality, um, racism, humanity, um, and social, socioeconomic justice, okay? And I'm gonna tell you my opinions on all four of them, whether you want them or not. If you don't want them, just stop scrolling, stop clicking, stop watching. First and foremost, um, I value traditional gender roles for me and my life. Um, what does that mean? It means I want to be with a man and I want him to allow me to be a woman. I want to look to him when I feel scared. I want to feel comforted by him. I want him to be the you know um, top of our family and me to be right next to him and for us to assume traditional gender roles. Now, obviously this is not 1920, um, you know, where women cannot vote, and I'm not even addressing that because it's not the world we live in. I'm not a hardcore feminist, um, but I do believe that traditionally women are different than men biologically, intellectually, we have the similar capacities, but um, we're made differently. Men traditionally have muscles that are larger than women for a reason. So on the next subject, I don't believe in like trans, trans as being another gender. Um, I just don't believe in it. I believe in respecting their wishes if they want to be called another gender. But at the end of the day, you don't have a uterus and you're not a woman. You don't have a penis and you're not a man. So if you ask me nicely to refer to you as whatever you want to be referred to, I will. Because why wouldn't I be respectful of another human being? But I'm not delusional and I understand that what makes a man a man and a woman a woman, a male a male and a female a female are reproductive sex organs. So I'm fully aware of that um, and I won't pretend like I'm not but I will be respectful of whatever, you know, your wishes are, as I'd like you to call me a woman because I'm a woman and a mom, you know? Okay, so take three. Um, not because I did not eloquently state my point, but because they continue to freeze it. So I was discussing another point. This goes into my values of uh, social justice and um, just issues that I don't think should be gaslit for our children and each other and the internet. And uh, Turning Point USA, uh, specifically, I think it was Charlie who made this point that the majority of murders are committed by black people, statistically. And someone said, well, that's because the majority of impoverished neighborhoods and areas are, you know, black people. And what I say is it's more than that. It's also not only are they poverty areas, but they're also areas that don't receive a police response. So when you have violent crimes that are happening, you have to protect yourself in some way. Right. And then, yes, they are, you know, the majority taking place in poverty stricken areas. Uh, and that is because of slavery, period. And then you also have to ask yourself if you were sexually assaulted or brutally attacked and you called law enforcement to come help you and they didn't show up 
or they showed up several hours later. And we're not blaming, we're not saying law enforcement is the devil. No, we're not saying that at all. What we're saying is of God, we understand. Of God means of understanding. Of God means of knowing. If we are of God and we are claiming to be godly children, followers and believers of God, we have to also, you know, put that into action. And in doing so, you have to be able to look through the perspective of other people, even if it's not your life. We don't all have to take on the form of others to be able to understand. It just takes a a tiny bit of effort. If you're in a neighborhood and you get raped and you call the police and they don't show up and you have a gun, are you shooting? Religiously, I don't really have a one-size-fits-all answer for that. I go to different churches. I was baptized and raised Lutheran. I don't like the lighting over there. Uh, I look so red. I was baptized and raised Lutheran. I go to um, St. James Church, with which is, I believe, Episcopalian. I go to Fourth Presbyterian sometimes. Um, I go to Catholic Church sometimes. And I also believe in a lot of the teachings um, in the Quran. So I don't have one, um, you know, religious answer or viewpoint for you. I believe in God. And I believe in reeling in the behaviors of ourselves and society to what they were originally intended when the Bible was written you know, um, and sticking as close to that as far as values, morals, and ethics go as we can. Regarding immigration and immigration reform and refugees and federal funding for refugees, um, my only opinion is if we can build a wall, why can't we add three other walls and a roof and offer housing at the border? Um, whatever political constituency and, you know, paperwork needs to be done, uh, why can't it be done while also, you know, providing for some sort of safe space right there at the point of entry? Uh, People don't flee their country and sleep in terminals of airports because they feel safe and secure, right? So there's a huge crisis going on if there are people literally living in those capacities that needs to be addressed. Um, And that has nothing to do with what country of origin you or your family come from. And back to relationships, I value monogamy and I would never be in a non-monogamous relationship ever. Um, I mean, unless I didn't know that the person was not being monogamous. And that's basically just because I don't like to play games with one person, let alone multiple. And there is no such thing as a perfect relationship. Every relationship is going to have drama and stress, and it's just a matter of, you know, putting forth effort with the person who you partner with to work through those dramas and stressors. Um, But I have four children who come with their own drama and stress, and I have drama and stress, so why would I want to say, oh yeah, I'll be in a relationship with two more people who have drama and stress or three more people? Absolutely not. One person and their drama and stress is all I have room for. For parenting style, I believe in being honest with my kids and delivering them truth that's catered to their age and level of understanding. Um, And specifically what that means is I wouldn't tell my 10-year-old the exact same version that I would tell my 17-year-old or even my 16-year-old. And you know your children best. You know what they understand and what they don't understand. Um, You know, and that in itself makes all the difference in how you deliver information to them Um, and the effect on their happiness. And when I discuss happiness, I'm not talking about fun. I'm talking about overall, over a course of years, is the child happy? And when you think about how to deliver information to your child, you have to weigh in uh, the effect that that information will have on their overall happiness and ability to regulate. So... um, yeah, you know, just play it by ear and you know your child best. I'm proud to be partnering with my very good friend, Lee Greenwood, who doesn't love his song, God Bless the USA, in connection with promoting the God Bless the USA Bible. This Bible is the King James Version and also includes... 
My most important and like undervalued value, I think, that's going on in America today is, and this is outlined in my What's Your Impact campaign, bullying and kindness. Um, and this applies to all ages from kindergarten toddlers all the way to adults. If we don't find a way to get adults on board with stopping in their tracks and asking themselves, what is my impact? If I engage in this behavior, what are the residual effects on the people around me? How can we expect their children to do so or their children's children to do so? Um, just not being a jerk. If you're watching TV, and this can apply to in-person social media or whatever, if you're watching TV and you're, you're going through channels, you're not going to stop and watch something you don't like, right? So why would you stop on someone's social media and talk down to them or degrade them? That's terrible. You know, let's get... And families should always stay together. Um, if you have someone who you're, you know, dealing with who you don't think is capable of being a parent, you should be using the money to rehabilitate that person and that family, not to pay a stranger in the foster care system to temporarily take care of the child. Rehabilitate families together. Rehabilitate them together. It's not a matter of money. It's a matter of morality. I really don't have anything to say about same-sex marriage. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And I think where we're at right now is where we should be. Um, it is what it is. People love who they love, uh, you know, and that's it. However, there are a lot of subliminal issues that go along with um, same-sex marriages in the foster care system. And this is why I'm saying families need to stay together. There have been numerous very corrupt, coercive um, manipulations that have taken place that have literally stolen babies and children um, for the purpose of placing them for profit. Placing a child for profit is the most disgusting and destructive thing that someone could do. So if, if that were going to be the case of um, a same-sex couple raising a child, it should only be in a pre- determined surrogacy um, and that is you know completely outside of the system it's not systemic it's not of the system it's not criminally you know monitored it's not um, DCFS monitored it has absolutely nothing to do with those agencies and it would be like a formal contract with a lawyer um, and sometimes the exchange of money that would be the only you know in my opinion ethical way um, because the incentive that I personally have witnessed um, to cause damage to someone in an effort to have access to their child um, is very is very relevant to uh, the, the subject matter as it's discussed. But at the end of the day, it's always been my opinion that the queer community is just like any one of the rest of us. There are successful people who are lesbians or who are gay. Um, there are people who are kind, compassionate, caring, and abide by, you know, laws, morals, and ethics of every sexual orientation. And that's really, I feel we've come so far from it that it's not even an issue. It's like interracial dating. Does anyone even care anymore? Like, is that still a thing? Like, is that something that people, I don't know, maybe I'm privileged to live in an environment where... I have been around gay people and interracial couples and all these sorts of controversial things that they don't even seem controversial to me. Uh, you know, the majority of my life, I've been around these sorts of things. Um, so what rock is there? What little town is there that still doesn't accept those things? I, I really don't know, but um, I, I don't even think it's a thing anymore, is it? Now, another one that I recently formed was with regards to homelessness and poverty. There should not be any of this, period. We are in 2024 in an evolved American society. There is no reason for this. I mean, we have so much space in this, in this world that we've built, in this country that we've built, in this city of Chicago that we've built. To see even one person living outside other than because they choose to live outside is unacceptable, in my opinion. 
every single person should have access to a living space, whether they can afford to pay for one or not. The same with food. Um, and that doesn't have to come at the expense of middle income taxpayers' dollars. Um, you know, there is enough to go around. We live in a world of abundance, not in a world of lack. Abundance. I need a tan. I really feel like that Muse filter is just giving glow. And my regular face is giving, let's go to Florida. Or Hamas, LA. Any warm weather climate for like a week or two. LA tan, Palm Beach tan. <laughs> Look at this, you guys. So I guess people were complaining that there were migrants in the field houses at the park district. So they're moving them to shelters. At least they're getting shelters. Spicy honey. It's Holy Week in Chicago and everywhere. People just don't understand this. There isn't anything more important that you will have in your life than your kids, period. Okay, so I've had several interviews today and last week, but all of the opportunities are for sales with an initial investment required. So we'll see what I choose. Um, I really, really like two or three of the opportunities so far. I feel like I could realistically see myself being successful in those roles. Um, but one of them is for alcohol, um, which we are not allowed to have here and I would need to store it um, and then like do events and tastings and things, samplings and things. And the other one is for um, travel. So they both require um, an initial investment. And like I said, I, I know that I could be successful in them. It's just gonna take some creative problem solving. So for the update, I'm still um, wearing the same shoes with holes and uneven soles as I was a year and a half ago. Um, just had a baby, so don't really fit my clothing. Um, <laughs> and I'm doing my best to make the best of a situation that continuously gets progressively more complicated each day. Um, I'm also not being permitted to discuss certain aspects of the situation um, by court order. So this is an exact repeat of what went on four years ago that I want nothing to do with. Um, and I would like it to stop immediately. With regards to housing, we are in a homeless shelter. Um, and I'm very grateful for that. We've been there since the birth of Weston. Um, and I received $450 a month from TANF. Um, but they've put that on hold because there's a five-year limit. Um, everything that I had went to buy, you know, clothes and stroller and car seat for my son. Um, and then the big kids, I just send groceries and, you know, visit them as I can. Um, I'm still sending out 50 to 300 resumes every single month. And you can find that information posted in the bio section. Um, so click on the bio section where it says my name and like the bio. Underneath there are little circles called highlights. One of them is called bio. So you can click on that and find my resume. If anyone has any um, employment opportunities, please let me know. And if you'd like to donate, let me know. And we slept through breakfast today, but the good news is that um, I can get some exercise. I wanted to use one day to just rest in bed all day, to have no mental exertion, no physical exertion. I'm five weeks postpartum. I have had very, very few of those days over the last several 10 years. Um, so my plan was to just be relaxing. Um, God had other plans. So now we're taking a walk. Uh, we're going to go look and see if we can find some gym shoes that are like $30 or $40 at Ross. And Xavier is being so kind as to buy me a big breakfast, his wife, who just had a baby. Anyways, my main um, issue is that I have my phone bill my shoes, uh, the, the entire wardrobe is down to three pairs of, or four pairs of leggings. Most of them have holes in them. And um, Easter is on Sunday. So I always do an Easter egg hunt for my children. If you've been following since the beginning, 
you know for a fact that this situation was not caused by me, so uh, I wouldn't be asking if it was. Um, if anyone would like to donate, please do so via Cash App or send me an e-gift card for Target um, or Amazon. Thank you so much. And my, my um, Cash App account is posted right here. And with regards to accountability, I'm talking about the fact that I was four years ago in my own home with an income. I was selling renewable energy with One Energy Solutions for RPA and Inspire. I was making a decent weekly wage. My children lived with me. And then I was hurtled into this black hole of sorts that I, I can't see a doorway out of yet. And every single time I talk to anyone about it, it's like they understand what I'm talking about and tell me that resolution is on its way. And then there's like a whole other set of brand new people who are like, well, what's going on here? Like, where are all the people who are here since day one so that I don't have to keep explaining this. Are you guys still alive? Everyone okay? And on top of that, we have court tomorrow and no money for a bus pass. And I need a bus pass so I could go to my baby Alexis and drop her off an Easter basket. The big kids, I'm fine just sending them some candy from Amazon and $10 through Cash App for lunch. But the, the baby, like I said before, she deserves a curated Easter egg hunt. And so I would like to make her an Easter basket as I've done every other year of my children's lives and bring that to them. In order to do so, I need a bus pass. And for my next trick, I'll be creating an outfit for court tomorrow out of $32 and a maternity dress. Where are you gonna model it? Okay, so now as I prepare for my afternoon pump, I have to come on and be like, okay, so I'm asking my sponsors to send me money for shoes and a bus pass. And I'm freaking out over Easter and getting my kids their Easter baskets. And I'm freaking out because I had nothing to wear in court. But now I have my outfit for court planned out. I have a safe place, you know, to sleep. And I think that the transition from being thrown outdoors for such an extended period of time and doing without for so long is the constant reminder that now you're okay, you're okay, you're okay. Um, and that's, that doesn't interrupt with, you know, daily life. It just makes the people around you um, have to either get out of the way so that you can go through your, your process yourself of remembering that you're okay, or the people around you need to be supportive. You know, if they can't be supportive, they have to just leave because this is something everyone. So as I get back into the space and prepare for my afternoon pump, this is take four or five of this. Um, I have to remind myself as I'm freaking out for my court outfit tomorrow and bus pass money to get my kids their Easter baskets. We just spent, you know, a year plus in a tent um, you know, I have not been able to earn my own money and there have been several other abuses. I'm in a safe place now. And part of trauma healing and recovery is the constant reminder to self that you're in a safe place now, you know, and, and that reminder to yourself comes along hand in hand with your support system. And if you don't have a support system, it's increasingly difficult to readjust. So Everything is okay. We'll figure out the Easter baskets. We'll figure out everything like we always do. <sighs> Deep breath. Also, you guys, I forgot to mention, two more people were, were placed in their apartments, which is the best news ever. Every time I hear someone saying that, I get so happy because I know how it feels um, to not have a place and because that means you know we're that much closer so keep on praying for everyone in this situation um, because there are solutions and I mean what more could we ask for that's it's such a blessing and so here are the other um, accounts that I've all grown by myself um, and that were all either removed hacked or taken offline and this is just since 2020 um, so I had a primary account primary to that I'm sorry prior to that um, and that is also gone um, and here they are 
As I have always said, if you reaching your goals put someone and their children and family um, in a space to suffer inhumanely, especially, it should definitely go without saying that you should swerve, you know? Um, I really want everyone to be working on the impact campaign. And like I said before, rather than pointing the finger at others to take accountability that belongs to them, um, asking the question, what is your impact, yourself and the people around you? How have your actions and behaviors impacted everyone? Not just the people who you see, you know? Um, and I think that's the way to get people to take accountability for their own behaviors. Hey guys, if my sponsors are here and they do not know my regular personal blog has not been moved it was taken down again this is the third or fourth one that's been taken down at 15.2 thousand the other one 30 thousand or 50 thousand or 17 thousand or 8 thousand uh, those are all my different blogs that have been either hacked frozen or taken down so uh, sponsors if you're here i I need money for bus passes for the week. I need money for the phone bill. I need money for the wardrobe. Um, everything has kind of been at a standstill. And there's another um, personal blog up, and I'll tag it right here. Um, it's 1HG, no, HG1 Heather G. Um, and I'm going to be changing it to my same vanity name that I had as soon as the 14-day period is, is lifted so that I can.